forging cyber. Forging cyber security. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV and I'm here at DEF CON 22 outside of the Rio in Las Vegas, Nevada and I'm speaking with Nick Prococo and you are now the VP of Strategic Services at Rapid7 which is a new position. Congratulations. And How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. It's good to see you again. We always like to talk with you at these shows. Um, you were here at DEF CON last year speaking and now you've come back with an update. So tell us a little bit about what you were talking about. So Josh Corman and I last year um, basically had a conversation with the DEF CON community through our talk around something we were talking, calling the Calvary. Um, and actually over the last year, basically became a grassroots movement and a collective of security researchers, um, you know, media, fo media people, um, lawyers, um, PR people who basically all wanted to work together to basically form a towards a common cause. And that common cause is really focusing on, um, on human life and public safety and where, it, where, where those intertwine with technology. Um, and the big premise, that big problem statement is that technology is accelerating faster than our ability to secure it. And so we're basically forming and connecting people together and trying to motivate researchers and motivate uh, manufacturers to really collaborate in order to improve products and, and protect the public. Do you feel manufacturers are aware of the importance of this collaboration? I think some of the manufacturers, um, the more mature ones that you're aware of, you know, that from a consumer device standpoint, mm -hmm. people like Apple or Google or Microsoft, obviously are very mature in their ability to collaborate with researchers, to be able to intake vulnerability reports um, to those, you know, on their products, and then work, work directly with them in order to solve problems. I think once you get beyond really the core manufacturers of the well-known consumer products and you get into things like the lesser known IOT vendors, um, you get into the medical device manufacturers, um, even the automotive manufacturers, it gets a little murky. I think you know, in some sense they, they're aware that safety and security is an issue, um, but there's not really maturity in how they handle issues. And they certainly don't have open collaborative dialogues with researchers. Um, there's no bug bounty programs for, uh, for innovative thing devices. There no bug bounty programs for, for, for automobiles. Um, and, and so as a researcher, if you don't have a connection, you're not able to collaborate, you run into a brick wall, and then sometimes you can run into a legal wall, mm -hmm. or, or even a, even a law, wall that's a pro, you know, prosecutor, prosecution. And so um, our goal is to try to you know, open the dialogue between the various groups. Um, we're forming a 501c3 educational foundation, um, which some of the big deliverables will be summits, where researchers, manufacturers, um, lawmakers um, will be invited together to talk about the issues and collaborate collectively rather than being on different teams. Cool. Yeah, no, that sounds like a great idea. Um, do you think that over the past year, manufacturers have you know, gained an awareness, but also taken measures, started putting security measures in place for their devices? Um, I think, you know, we're seeing some momentum. I think um, if you specifically look at, you know, one car manufacturer like Tesla, um, they actually have an open disclosure policy um, published on their website. That's very different than, you know, many, many manufacturers out there. So that shows that Tesla's obviously, you know, very proactive, um, very progressive compared to their peers. And I think, you know, it's, this is a long road. Um, it, within the cavalry, we don't think that the world's going to change next year. Um, this could be a five, you know, you know, eight, ten year you know, drive in order to get everything to where it should be, but eventually we'll get there. And from our perspective, it's, you know, if we don't do it, um, maybe no one else will. And then ten years ago, ten years from now, we'll be having the same conversation that we really need to do something right. in order to get in front of these issues. Right. So you've set the ball rolling. That's a good start. Yeah. yeah. Now, last year at DEF CON, I talked to you right after you gave your talk, and I know you had a really good response from the crowd. It was like standing room only. This year, um, what kind of response did you get? It was just as impressive. You know, we were, Josh and I were very excited by the turnout. Um, lots of people attended, especially at 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning, right. right after all the parties were probably wrapping up just a few hours before. Um, and then one thing, even when we explain to the audience, when we communicate with the DEF CON audience, they're only a fraction of who we want to communicate to. Um, a big piece of what the Cavalry's responsibility and the focus is getting outside the echo chamber, um, speaking at other conferences, speaking at medical device manufacturing conferences. I actually spoke at a real estate investment manager conference on security and the, all the questions that I was asked during that entire session was around Internet of Things because they're buying these multi-million dollar, billion dollar skyscrapers and all the HVAC systems and the elevator systems and the fire suppression systems, are, they, they're, they're aware that they're all internet enabled and they're able to get access to those things remotely. So there's a big concern for those groups. So primarily getting outside the echo chamber is what we're about, but of course we need to recruit members from within the DEF CON community and the security community to then help us outreach um, to the public and also to the, to the other folks that are, um, that are consumers or even manufacturers of these types of devices. Absolutely. Um, yeah, get people on board. And speaking of the cybersecurity community, 
community, you actually have your own trade show now in Chicago. Tell us about that one. Yeah, it's called ThoughtCon. Um, it'll be next year, um, May 14th and 15th, 2015. And it's going to be our sixth year. Um, we're expanding it from one day. Um, it became a really long one day with all the preparation. And so we're expanding it from one day to two days. And so this year it'll be Thursday and Friday. Um, and every single year after that, there's been a B-side Chicago. Um, so now this year, people can come if they're from out of town. They can go to ThoughtCon Thursday and Friday and stay Saturday um, and for B-sides. And, it, and during May, it should be really, really nice weather. Absolutely. Chicago would be nice in May for sure. Um, what are some of the, like, the highlights people could look forward to at ThoughtCon or what makes the show different from DEF CON? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's much smaller. <laughs> it's a, you're not going to run into the hallway yeah. problems yeah. Um, and, and you know, the large crowds. Um, but the community is very tight knit. It's the same community feel that you get at DEF CON. Um, there is the same types of things. There's Lockpick Village, there's our Harbor Hacking Village, but just on a much smaller scale, a much more intimate scale. You don't have to wait 20 minutes to get to the, har to the hardware hacking table right. or you don't have to wait in line for 15 people to pick locks, you literally can walk up and, and, and collaborate. Excellent. Well, maybe we will come check it out one year. Yeah, so it's great to catch up with you. Thanks so much for speaking with us. And we look forward to seeing where your research goes in the future. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Secure Ninja TV, so you don't miss anything that we're shooting out here at DEF CON 22. Also, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. I'm Alicia Webb. Thanks for watching. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.